1970s TV introduced the Six Million Dollar Man, which spun off the Bionic Woman, which almost spun off another robotic super show. And no, we don't mean Bionic Bigfoot. Throughout the 1970s, American culture was enjoying a robot renaissance. That's the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. Cinemas played mature robot-themed entertainment like Westworld and The Stepford Wives. I'll just die if I don't get this recipe. Meanwhile, on TV, there were lots of kid-friendly robots. <laughs> get down. Future Cop was a precursor to RoboCop, where an android was partnered with Ernest Borgnine. The sitcom Holmes and Yo-Yo featured another odd couple of man and machine using cyber skills to crack cases. In my book, you got to make yourself a good cop. One of the more bizarre entries was a Saturday morning cartoon where Mo, Larry, and Curly were android superheroes. Get me down! All I gotta do is unhook you. What a time to be alive. Of course, the biggest robo-series of its day was The Six Million Dollar Man and its spin-off, The Bionic Woman. Both shows combined action, humor, excitement, and the occasional cameo by Bigfoot. The Bionic Power Couple captivated a nation with their super strength, super speed, and super ratings. And along the way, they spawned all kinds of tie-ins. So exciting, it defies the imagination. It's Kenner's new Six Million Dollar Man Play-Doh set. Bionic Woman Sports Car. Bionic Woman Dome House with Inflatable Dome. For children of all ages. Is that the Six Million Dollar Man's boss? That's much more valuable than Steve Austin. Despite the show's popularity, ABC canceled the Bionic Woman in the summer of 1977. But NBC picked up the series, giving the character another chance. The producers used this opportunity to attempt a spin-off of the spin-off. Apparently, the bionic chain of command goes man, woman, dog, which sounds awfully familiar. The animal chain of command goes mouse, cat, dog. In September of 1977, this two-part episode aired as a backdoor pilot for the new series. The episode begins with Bionic Woman Jamie Summers discovering a character we've never seen before. His name's Max, and he's capable of doing amazing things because he's part robot. It's like me. Problem is, Max has become depressed, and that's bad. That Max is experiencing a new kind of bionic rejection. And if the lab can't figure out what's wrong, they'll resort to extreme measures. I'm going to have to deal with his rejection the scientific way. I don't, I don't understand. An autopsy. No! Disgusted by their cruel science, Jamie helps the dog escape. And once they're out in the wild, these two bond immediately. They even have their own imitation Burt Bacharach song. When the authorities realize what's happened, Max and Jamie are on the run. If the dog attacks, shoot to kill. Roger. During their journey, the bionic fugitives avoid the police. Max performs a daring rescue, saving a little girl from certain death. Did you see the doggy, mommy? And later, he sees an open flame, which makes him freak out. <laughs> so Jamie brings the dog to her ex-boyfriend, a forest ranger named Roger. And during that visit, she realizes Max was never rejecting his bionics. Max was caught in a lab fire when he was a little puppy. And uh, th th that's what's making him so crazy all the time, is his fear of fire. Honestly, fear of fire gives Max a nice universal monsters quality. Ah, what, you fool? Then Max fights a big bad wolf who's been killing sheep. Instead of being recognized as a hero, the dog is accused of a crime he didn't commit. Gotcha, you bloodsucker. The hunter's bullet sparks a forest fire. Don't you love it when a hero must confront his greatest fear? Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? A blazing inferno spreads throughout the park. Even firefighters can't contain it. The bionic dog leads a rescue team back to his friends, and they arrive just in time. Good boy, Max. Good boy. And the episode ends with the question on everyone's mind. 
Rudy, what's going to happen to Max now, huh? I'll try to help Max overcome his fear of fire. Not in the lab, huh? Not in the lab. Guys, we really need a setting for this new spinoff. Well, where will you keep him? We're not sure. We might give him to Jamie. Or a certain forest ranger's cabin. That's the premise of the new show? A dog teaming up with a forest ranger? That's the idea. Frankly, I would have preferred a series about a runaway dog. Like the Incredible Hulk, he travels from town to town, helping strangers with his mechanical jaw. But the Ranger version provides a staple of backdoor pilots, the promise of star cameos. I get visiting privileges, you know. It's hard to imagine why kids wouldn't want a TV show about a super robot dog that fights crime. Oh, of course, they already had one. He's a go-go dog person. That's me, dog. Dino Mutt Dog Wonder premiered a full year before the Bionic Dog as part of the Scooby Doo Dino Mutt Hour. May I have this dance, man? It offered comedy, crime, and robo hijinks that would put Inspector Gadget to shame. Wowzers! So the Bionic Dog never went to series. But Max did appear in a few more episodes of The Bionic Woman, often rescuing people who are tied to a chair. Go behind me, Max. Chew the chains. Max and Tyus. Come on, Max. Oh. Sadly, Max did not return for the reunion movie. Footnote, a second reunion movie, The Bionic Showdown, was another backdoor pilot. This one introduced The Bionic Girl, played by America's sweetheart, Sandra Bullock. I guess I just don't know my own strength, I'm sorry. That one didn't become a series either, despite putting Sandra Bullock in the production company's vanity card. The last time anyone saw Max was in The Bionic Man, a comic book based on an unproduced screenplay by Kevin Smith. In the story, Max is protecting the Bionic Man when he is killed by Bigfoot. Damn you, Bigfoot! Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Atomic Abe for more videos about would be spin offs, including a Punky Brewster backdoor pilot that featured boy orphans and knife fights. Beat it. <laughs>